What's going on? I'm Anoki the One, and this is Red Pill Radio, and I am going to be talking about the curse of white supremacy. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time. There's been all kinds of stuff going on in the world. This whole year has just been insane, and I've gone inward and really dug deep into my genealogy, and I'm going to be talking about some of that I mean, if you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen some some of the things that I have discovered, and it's just been insane. It's been crazy. And the things that I've discovered is largely the reason why my Instagram page got deleted, had to start from scratch. Um, but that's neither here nor there. It, and that whole experience actually really blocked my throat chakra. But I definitely needed a break because it was just like, you know, I don't even feel like talking anymore. I'm just ready to get moving with you know solutions and going inward again you know studying continuing to study and learn and and focus on my businesses and different things like that so the curse of white supremacy okay first let's define white supremacy and by the end like my goal for this video for this podcast is whether you're white, you're black, you're Latino, you're Asian, whatever, I want to make you think, question, basically. I want you to question some things and to hack this white supremacy that happens in the mind of us all because it's infiltrated all of us. If you've grown up in America, you have been infiltrated by white supremacy. Okay, and the definition, the belief that whites are supreme okay the belief that this white culture that has been created right i talk about the elite all the time this is red pill radio okay you should be used to that by now that the elite have created okay so and for me history is very very important because whiteness was created at some point because people that are from Germany, people that are from Soviet Union, people that are from, you know, r- different places in the world, right, who would be considered white, they have a totally, it's totally different, right? Like Jews are, are treated totally different, like they have a whole different history than an American white person, right? So, or quote unquote, you know, so there's so many different ways that it slips into the crack of our culture and it is very detrimental not only for black people but also for people who consider themselves white people who consider themselves latino all kinds of different things right because it's not the biggest thing that i learned is that it's not for the benefit of white people (laughs) that's the craziest thing like people think that and that's where there's a discrepancy between people who are upset like a lot of white people hate when you say when you talk about white privilege right because and i and, and my for me right white privilege is very real i just think that people don't understand what the realness of it is i think it's real because your mind is powerful that's the only reason why it's real it's real because there's constructs there's beliefs there are um you know vibrations there's a there's a black has a different vibration than white black the vibration of black the definition of black is negative it is the negative ion is the negative charge right if you talk about the black experience you're talking about the negative experience you're literally saying the negative experience by definition right we can try to say it's beautiful it's this is that power blah 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 negative power negative beauty that's literally by definition if you look at yin and yang the yin sign in, in peace the yin and the yang okay there's black and there's white there's darkness in the light there's a little bit of darkness in the light there's a little bit of light in the darkness right so by who this is getting deep already so by there being a a definitive cut between the two right not only are you putting the people who are so-called black in bondage but you're also putting the people who are so-called white in bondage it's just the is the other side of the coin because life is not all white it's not all right it's not all jolly right that and that's that's the uh 
it's like it's the curse of white supremacy but it's also the curse of this positivity movement because there is a negative charge there's a positive charge there's a negative charge and they're they both work together in a beautiful synergy that creates peace right that is why that the peace sign is the way it is together they make peace but divided you have chaos right when you have a group of people who have this belief that they are the victors they're they are you know the winners they they're the conquerors you know they uh are entitled to you know greatness right and then you have this group of people who are conditioned in you have suffered. You're always overcoming. You, 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 you're, you're poor. You're destitute. You're slaves. You're right. Well, then you have chaos. You have chaos in both sides. So you have the, the kids going to run to school, shooting up the, the people. Then you have the kids run, shooting up their neighborhood. You have chaos. Okay. But if both will understand, white people have been slaves. In America, largely, the original slaves in America, okay, were white. From England, there's a book called White Slaves. I think that's what it's called. And the stuff is so hidden because there is a a clear reason why they created that division. They created white privilege. People who try to uh, say that white privilege doesn't exist. No, honey, bun. It does exist. It was created on purpose for a particular reason, okay? And during Baker's Rebellion, if you go back in history, during Baker's Rebellion, the whites and the blacks were in the same boat, right? This is in the 1600s. Um, and the blacks largely were indigenous people, but that's a whole other topic. I might talk about that later. But basically had been captured, okay, and used as indentured servants slash slaves, Okay, they were treated like slaves, both of them, equally. Okay, so what happened was they had a whole revolt, right? They came together and they revolted against the elite because they were like, hold up, y'all trying to do this British stuff over here and we're not trying to, we're not feeling that. Like, nah, y'all not about to give us nothing and we're going to work for y'all and we the majority. That makes no sense, right? They joined together, revolted. They united and revolted. So what did they do? They started to think, well, maybe if we give these white people, these light, fair skinned people, I mean, it really doesn't matter, but let's just pick a coin. We lighter skin. So we just going to give these light skins, you know, a privilege. Let's see how that works. Right. And also what people need to know is slavery was so we think like they teach us that slavery was so cut and dry and it was all figured out and everybody knew what they were doing and and, and, and the slaves were always just so scared to run. <laughs> Never in history. that It was a mess. It was a whole mess the entire time. Okay. They had no idea what they're doing. So anyway, um, they're literally just experience, experimenting with stuff and see what works off, based off of human behavior. Okay. So they saw, okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna give these fair-skinned people some privilege. We're gonna, you know, let them eat in different quarters. We're gonna give them better food. We're gonna pass laws that, you know, they get to do certain things. They get to have a, a, a little piece of land after a couple of years, but we're not gonna give it to these people, right? We're gonna create a division, right? So when that happens it's just like sibling rivalry if you give one child a little more a little more right that's like the boy versus the girl like you treat this one like a princess and then you shoot the boy like you think a boy should be treated and then they grow up and resent each other that's literally that's literally what happens and 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 it's so deep because the 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 so-called white people and the so-called black people are literally the american brothers and sisters they're literally si siblings right i learned this through my genealogy this is the stuff that the pro-black people are not going to tell you this is the stuff that the white supremacist people are not going to tell you and the the black supremacists right they're all deep we we're, we're egyptians and all this other shit but they're not deep enough to be real with you and say well these people that you see today that are white <laughs> in america there are way more likely to be related to you than these people that you claim as your brothers and sisters in nigeria and all this other stuff because it's called proximity 
it's proximate it literally is common sense if you actually think about it but if you do your genealogy it's going to be made very very clear your great 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 grandmother is probably white if you're if you're if you think you're black so black right now if you're so white your great 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 grandmother you got some black in you you got it otherwise you wouldn't survive on on top of the earth you got it in you okay so the, and not even to say black and you but you got you got you you got some color up in there okay so um we're literally brothers and sisters and so they don't want us to know that that's why they don't want us to be doing our genealogy but i'm going to get into that later right so the things that i talk about is extremely uh it's extremely what is it controversial only because it's it's so crazy that what i'm saying is controversial because it's literally common sense like it just it's common sense what i'm saying but they don't want you to have common sense because common sense at this point is unity and they don't want you to have unity right now especially between the races of people it's so insane like i have a a third great grandfather who literally looks like a black japanese man i looked at his picture i was like you are black samurai he literally his he has chinky eyes he has long straight facial hair that's just like with a suit on i'm just like what are you doing i didn't i was not told that this is possible i'm showing y'all a picture i'm not i wasn't nobody told me huh but if you actually do genealogy and you actually study the history of the world, it makes absolute sense. Like, American, quote-unquote, black people, even our phenotype, phenotype, if you study archaeology, phenotype, anthropology, I don't know what the hell. I'm not big on the specifics, okay? I know stories. I remember the, in the books. So phenotype is basically your facial structure and the way y- you look, you're built, okay? Um, A lot of indigenous, indigenous americans or american black what they call black people have asiatic facial structures we kind of have the little chinky eyes um and if you really pay attention and i wouldn't just say chinky eyes but like it's just not our phenotype is very diff distinctly different than for example someone from nigeria or kenya or a different place we we all know that but we think that it's just uh a mixture of white but in reality like the people in (laughs) in history class that they're completely silent about the asians they're completely silent about chinese japanese korean they're completely silent completely silent about latinos they're basically completely silent about indigenous native americans and what that even is which is uh, us largely us the people they're quiet about that's who the indigenous people are okay so so we don't start to formulate and be like dang wait how wait wait, the Asians came to this point they had Japanese they had Japanese people in history in America they had Asians I remember my dad my grandpa telling me about Japanese he he never has known like I literally was like um do you recall ever meeting anybody from Africa like at all in your childhood or growing up or and he was just like no nah. but uh they had japanese they had japanese i was like japanese what the hell is japanese he's like japanese japanese i was like oh japanese he country <laughs> like oh japanese he's like yeah they had japanese or he said japanese but you never even think about like it's so weird they literally delete delete the the asian population out of history and they've been here like supposedly it you can go from like right now in the winter or whatever you can literally travel from asia like russia all that you can travel across the top and come to america like right now so you mean to tell me they was they hadn't figured that out 1400 years ago 1500 years ago all this other stuff they've been been going back and forth and on ships okay this is not new this is not the new world this is very 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 old ancient world okay in america but that's neither here but 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 that all is a part of white supremacy okay all of that contributes to white supremacy because even the people who consider themselves white have no earthly idea 
who the hell they are, what the hell they are. A lot of them, they ha- they don't know what they are. They, and, and the crazy thing, especially with slavery, like <sighs> with slavery, a lot of white people, I went to all white schools and it, it is just so, it's just so wild. I was the only black person in all the schools. Most of them, like there's a few. Okay. And history class was the, the worst because you, you're the only black person and they get talking about slavery and your blood is just boiling, your blood boiling, your blood boiling. Okay. And, and that's what they want. They want my blood to be boiling because they want me to believe that the people, the pictures and literally it's just paintings. Who, any, I could have drew the paintings. We have no idea if this is really real. And you just don't even question it because they make it like these are facts when they're lies. Okay. I saw something. Okay. Let me, let me continue. Okay. So if you do genealogy, if you do your family tree, you will start to understand how in one, you, I mean, it's really such common sense in one generation you could literally have a huge, your family line can go all the way to England. It could go to France. It could go, it, so me, okay, my black samurai ancestor that I just told you about, he was actually half white. You could not tell it. The man is darker than me. It's crazy. It's, it's wild. And I never understood how people thought that I was half white in school but now I understand (laughs) like I just forget both of my parents if you look at them you'd be like okay they're black but yeah that's the that's the crazy thing so okay my third great grandfather he was half white and his white side goes all the way to George Washington so think about the irony of me sitting in an all-white classroom being taught about slavery and everybody in the room is assuming (laughs) that their ancestors their ancestors was the ones doing the slave owning and my ancestors was the one that was the slaves right and the and the more I do my genealogy okay the more I realize okay they completely omitted the mass population of black slave owners. I never even thought to even question, were there black slave owners? I never thought to ask that question until this year. Yes, there were, there were thousands. There were, I mean, a lot, a lot in the South. When I say a lot, I mean thousands. I was guided to, in the 1800s, a list of black slave owners and their last names. You can look it up. Some of y'all <laughs> are descendant of black slaves owners there was thousands the pe- the, the, the book was like a hundred pages long and there was at least a hundred names on each page there's a lot okay they're not gonna they didn't they completely omitted that from the, the history book okay so my direct descendant is george washington right and i'm sitting in these classrooms feeling like i'm pissed when they're teaching about slavery because they're making it seem like, oh, black people, this skin color equates me to a slave, right? And even my skin color, my ancestors, because my people are from New Orleans, right? That's why you need to know your personal history, your genealogy. Most of my ancestors were free people of color. Most. I'm saying on my dad's side, who was deeply uh, New Orleans, Free people of color, indigenous, some of them probably own slaves. I think at least one or two own slaves. And I wouldn't be b- be surprised if they own white slaves because a lot of people in New Orleans, black people in New Orleans, owned white slaves. They don't want you to know about that. They do not want you to know. <laughs> and and I, the crazy thing about black 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 culture, right? I saw this this t shirt with the, that this black girl had made. And it was like, it said, I am the ancestor of the, the I'm the grand child, child of the, 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 the slaves you couldn't kill. And she was like, white supremacists are mad, but I'm going to wear it anyway. That does not, saying you're the grandchild 
of the slaves that you couldn't kill does not make white supremacists mad. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just like, well, I don't kill because I killed your ancestors. What I know racist white people and they get off on the 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 image and the idea of you getting your ass whooped or your ancestors getting their ass whooped. I'm sorry. Like they're they're what? I remember in school they had websites dedicated i don't even know why they showed me this i was like if you had any kind of sense why would you even show me this right they're showing me websites okay that were dedicated to black jokes racist black jokes 90 percent of the jokes were about slavery okay okay gruesome disgustingness do you understand me i i was just like how could you ever in your mind think that this was funny right and and this was in high school. Like, y'all old enough to, like, this. we not in elementary. Like, you know, in elementary, you'd be saying things as your parents said. We in high school at this point. So I understand how real white supremacists, white people move and think. They get off on you shucking and jiving and, and looking desperate, looking a mess, a hot mess, saying how poor you are and how you you came from nothing. That's like literally the rite of passage of a black person <laughs> talking and being successful. You have to tell the story about how you was on food stamps and you could not afford bread and you the first one to go to college. Who started that? Why? Why do we feel like we need to do that? Why? I hate that. Like, stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Like, they love that. They lo- Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, they never had a real Thanksgiving. They only had ham on a piece of bread for Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. I feel so sorry. No. Stop it, please. So, um, that, 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 that. They get off on that. But what, you, <laughs> what they don't get off on, right? What they don't get off on, because I just had this conversation the other, other day with somebody. Because I'm like, yeah, white supremacy. And that's the thing with, like, conservatism or whatever. I don't consider myself conservative, but I am definitely a supporter of Trump um, because he basically woke up the world. Like, I never felt like I was American until this year because by him calling out this fake narrative it made me think it made me think okay he made me think before because i read his books before right so um i'm going back and forth because conservatives some of them are white supremacists right some of them are racist some of them are you know i'm trying to remember i'm trying to think of the word but basically don't have no experience around black people who have sense their 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 experience around black people is around the black person that is comfortable being the only black person (laughs) in the in in the circle i was never comfortable with that okay even though i was at all white schools i'm sitting by myself because we can't have we can't talk We, we don't relate okay you're not trying to have the conversation i'm trying to have okay so yeah so they're only comfortable with black people are like black white privilege doesn't exist i don't believe it no i'm not that one so having this conversation so with this new year now white people are trying to embrace the fact that they had white slaves but only to prove that white privilege doesn't exist in america which i'm like nah bruh right and i said this in, in, in a message i'm like you know white privilege is the ability to have been the original slaves in america right and really like where the word slave came from slav czechoslovakia right there was so many slaves in a area right they were getting so many slaves from this white area that they named it after y'all and y'all trying to debunk it but nah Come on, just be real. Y'all was the slave. Y'all the original slaves. Y'all were slaves more than anybody else probably in the world. So, um, yeah. So, trying to blindly debunk me saying that white privilege exists, um, that's a privilege because most people don't know that that's the case. Most people don't know white people were ever slaves, especially in America, especially the original slaves in America. That is a privilege. That is a privilege to not be taught in history, right, and have black pictures of black people hunched over picking cotton with the assumption that they're picking cotton because they're slaves, right? There's not 
slave movies every single year of white people whipping on black people, right? I mean, of black people whooping on white people. You don't never see a white person being a slave in America in any movie, any picture, any anything, okay? You don't see them getting beat. That is a white privilege because y'all was slaves. That's not, <laughs> you have the privilege to, to omit that from your mind and choose when you want to, when you want to identify with that. Okay. I don't get to choose that, right? People are going to identify me with slavery, whether my ancestors were slave or not. And most of my ancestors were not slaves. My ancestor was George Washington. Nobody's going to assume that if I was a white woman and I said, my ancestor 10 generations back is George Washington. Nobody would bat an eye. If I say it, they're like, Oh, wow. I wonder how that, and then they would assume that it was because of rape when that is not the case. It may or may not. I really don't know for sure. I just know that my uh, <laughs> my black samurai ancestor was out here looking like, you know, black samurai. He was half white. And that line goes all the way to George Washington's mother, who I'm related to. I'm not even related to the Washington side. I'm related to him by his mother, right? His mother is my great aunt 10 generations back which makes him my cousin 10 generations back right so genealogy once you can see that once you see that tree this is why they don't want you to do the tree they don't want you to do the tree of life because when you start doing that you get you get to a level of deepness especially as a american person then you're not surprised by the fact that kamala harris you know, is the ancestor, <laughs> Kamala Harris, his great, great grandfather, owned 200 plus slaves. And she is still benefiting from that till this day. She still have that same slave trader energy, right? She still has a slave trader. People try to make excuses. Well, we know all, we all know how that happened. No, the no, the hell we don't know how that happened. It happened because slavery ended, okay? And her great, great grandfather, her, uh, married a free woman of color do you know what a free woman of color is no why because they didn't teach you that because why it's white supremacy free person of color likely an indigenous person or a wealthy person of color or a person who just ain't never been a slave right might even own slaves might own might be in partnership with the slave owners right might be the original slave owners of that land and had a business partner who was Irish, had a business partner who was English. Does that make them a a a a a, a sellout or trader? How are they a sellout when that? And that's another thing. That's the thing with the black supremacy thing. All skin folk and kin folk. That's very true. But you have to understand the dynamics of the world, right? If you are already on this land and you've already created a situation, <laughs> and 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 that's how the economics work because of the time that they're in right and you just so happen to be the same color because at the same time the irish in the in the caribbean the white irish were slaves just like the the black irish were slaves and the, the black jamaicans were slaves and the white jamaicans were slaves and the black jamaicans were slave owners the white jamaicans were slave owners what you talk about what we make it we make it seem like and, and this is a part of this is a part of the white supremacy narrative, because they make it seem like whites were never slave in America. Where they make it seem like they never they always tell the story. Well, you uh, your African brothers and sisters sold y'all off in slavery. It's not our fault. We bought them. Well, your English ancestors. <laughs> this, this is this type of knowledge. This is the type of knowledge that 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 white supremacists don't like, or white people who have the like, who have this, um, and and really, when you talk like this on this level, it, if you if somebody is truly a white supremacist, if they're really like a hater, they're gonna get mad. But if they were taught and they subconsciously believe all these other things and they're trying to you know defend themselves, and you say, well, hey, you're white brothers and sisters your british brothers and sisters sold your people off if you think that's your people because you don't even know you you might have an african ancestry <laughs> um but that's 
another conversation that I am going to get to. Um, but the English people sold off their people because they were cheaper and easier to get. Much cheaper and easier to get than the Africans. That's why there are so few that ever came to America. But they don't tell you that. They want to lie to you talking about millions. At the same time, they're claiming millions of Africans are being brought here. Millions of Indians are being wiped out. That doesn't make sense, right? It only work, makes sense in the white supremacist mind. And the white supremacist mind makes absolutely no sense. It, there's no logic to it, right? Because it's it's literally a construct, okay? It's a blue pill, okay? It doesn't make sense for them to constantly be shipping people over from Africa. For one, it's a lot more expensive. For two... They're not going to know the land at all whatsoever to even be able to know how to farm it, right? It would take years just to teach them, okay? That that makes no sense. And they don't speak your language, right? So why do that, right? What was actually happening is they were partnering with indigenous tribes. The indigenous tribes know how to plant and grow and cultivate the land and that's another thing. Let me get into Thanksgiving because I'm tired of y'all ruining everything with white supremacy. And it's the black wokeness that's ruining it. You don't realize that your whole movement is is <laughs> is predicated on white supremacy. Okay? It's always, we've been conquered so we can't celebrate this anymore. They conquered this person and now we can't celebrate this anymore. And that's what Thanksgiving has become. Like, y'all, ha- y'all are a mess. Okay, first of all, It takes a little inch of research to figure out what's going on, okay? One, the little massacre, and I said little, because that's what it is. And, of course, white supremacy wants to blow it up and make it seem like, we got you guys. But, and that's the twist. And a lot of times it'll be a white person teaching this. Oh, it's so terrible that we massacred you you natives. Right, but they're they're not gonna talk about how they was gonna ass whip for eight months. The massacre that they're talking about, the Peacock massacre, they was getting the ass whip for eight months. Okay, eight months, and they finally got ahead. Okay, this is years after they had come and come to America and gotten established and made partnerships with other native tribes. There had been several Thanksgivings before this. Is this is how they do right? In the past five years. Literally, it's been like five years. They decided to cherry pick this event. Literally happened in May. It has nothing to do with November. It has nothing to do with Thanksgiving, right? They cherry picked this random event, and they oh, this is the truth behind Thanksgiving. Okay, this is one tribe, the Pequot tribe. I may be saying I may be saying this wrong, Pequot, whatever. I, I'm you know I'm disconnected from my indigenous people. I'm sorry. One tribe. And it's a tribe who's whipping these white people's ass. Maybe some of them are black, too, because they're black pilgrims as well, which y'all don't know about because they don't tell you nothing. Not eight months straight. They finally get ahead, and they want to do the most. But they do what they, like, people in war do. When they beat them, they had to terrorize their whole situation. They had to terrorize their village so they don't go out and run and get some homies in a neighboring tribe and come back and whoop that ass again because they had been kicking it behind for eight months. So they didn't want to risk it. So they went and burned up these people's whole village, right? And they captured some of the the warriors and used them as slaves. Some of them, they sold off as slaves, prisoners of war. That's how... The melanated people became slaves, okay? A lot of it had to do with prisoners of war. But guess what was happening when the indigenous people would beat them? They would do the same thing. They would terrorize their <laughs> their situation, take these white people and use them as slaves in their tribes. But what do they call that when that happens? They don't call them they don't call them warriors. They don't call them, you know, uh, fighters or whatever, competition. They call them savages. They're such savages. They stole our people. So you are out here 
not eating turkey on Thanksgiving, even though the indigenous people who were here before these fools ever got here. And when I say fools, some of them fools is my ancestors. I'm going to just be straight up. I'm real. Some of y'all fools, I have documentation that I have ancestors that landed here on Plymouth Rock as pilgrims. And I also have indi- mostly indigenous ancestry. But some of y'all fools was related to me. So me out here and not through rape and all this other that's why that's how they try to disconnect you from your 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 George Washington's, your Jefferson ancestry, your your possibility to even think that that could be your ancestors. And even if it is your ancestors, you're gonna disconnect because you're gonna assume that they could never have loved your <laughs> your mothers, your grandmothers, and and your grandfathers and stuff like that. That's how they make you disconnect. This is a red pill. This is a real red pill. Okay. So yeah, right. Indigenous people were having six Thanksgivings a year. Okay, we was out here eating. We was eating. Okay, we was eating. <laughs> we was eating. We have, we have six things. We didn't have one. We had six a year. Okay. And then they just so happened to get with the program. And another thing, <laughs> these fools, and like I said, when I say fools, my ancestors as well, these fools were starving for years, dying. Okay, they ha- they came here with all kind of diseases, right? Came here with all kind of diseases, and they unsanitary. Don't know what they're not sil- civilized. Okay, they make <laughs> it's so terrible. They make it seem like these English people landed here with royal suits on and just done up with looking wonderful by the time these fools got here they was dang near dead most of them died on the way here okay they was dang near dead by the time they got here then when they got here they realized they didn't know what 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 is this what kind of animals all kind of animals they're not used to they don't know nothing about this land the weather is different it's just like what is this what is this okay barely surviving starving they don't know how to cultivate the land they don't know nothing what's going on okay so you ha- they had to be friendly with the indigenous people okay the in- throughout all of history okay throughout all of hi- it was not in their benefit to make native americans catch the de- a disease and die it was not in all of them so they partnered with different indigenous people Okay, and then you have the indigenous people, uh, uh, Aboriginal, oh, uh, skin folk ain't kin folk. You know, some of them partner with the enemy. Some of them, par- they had some a- indigenous groups partner with the English. They had indigenous groups that partnered with the French. They had indigenous groups that partnered with the Spanish, right? Down south is more S- French and Spanish. Florida, Spanish, largely Spanish partner with the spanish texas largely partnered with the spanish why because spain owned that part in new orleans french okay that that's who the indigenous people partnered with right and so all throughout even george washington all the 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 great leaders the founders they were partnering with indigenous people because why they didn't want to get the head chopped off y'all make it seem like they came over here they make it seem like they came over here with guns and because they had guns that they was just terrorizing everybody. No, they was getting their ass whooped. They was getting their behind whooped. Okay, that's what you need to know. Okay, they lost a lot of fights. Indigenous lost a lot of fights. But guess what? We still here. We're still here. Okay. So, and when I say we, I mean Aboriginal American, copper colored Americans. The definition of American. Okay. If you don't do your ancestry, don't tell me. <laughs> that you are African American. That literally was created in the last forty years. Okay, and that's why if you if you Google, they'll tell you somebody sent me this. They'll tell you uh uh-uh, uh you can't go back on the ancestry of African Americans past a certain point in the eighteen hundreds. Why? That is a one hundred percent fact. You know why? Because nobody was African American before the nineteen hundreds. You was black. You was colored. You was Negro. You was Indian. You was mulatto. Was no African American, so that technically is a fact. That's how they. That's how they fool y'all. That is technically a fact. I literally have ancestors who were black on one in, one census record. They were white on a census record, and they were mulatto on a census record. 
all in their lifetime. Why? They weren't writing the census records, right? My ancestors, our ancestors as human beings, were not writing the census, right? Writing the information on the census until the 1940s or 50s. So everything, and that's why if you go on the census record, if you do your genealogy, okay, which is building your family tree from scratch, ask your grandparents over Christmas, over the holidays, start talking to your grandparents. Stop letting white supremacists tell you who your people are, okay? And when I say white supremacists, I mean the black ones too, all right? So, um, yeah. So you have you see the same handwriting all the way down because it was one person deciding, okay? And there was a time in history, which is the time when your great great grandparents, your grand your yeah your great grandparents, your great great grandparents, when the census man or woman would come around and they would have a gun with them, they would be holding a gun, okay? They would come to the neighborhoods and they would ask people what race they are, and if you were dark skinned and you said you was Indian, they was like, all right, okay, come here. They'd take you behind the house and shoot you dead. In front of your children. Why? Because they did not want the majority of the Aboriginal people. They're going to take the minority, the lighter skinned people, right? And even them, they terrorize them, right? But they want to take the majority and make sure you don't believe or even think in your mind that you're an Indian. Why? That you're indigenous. Why? Because that means you owe land. That means we owe you land. So we have to one by one by one reclassify you through paper genocide through the census records right through all these different records so your great grandchildren which is us don't know who the fuck we are and by not knowing who we are they gentrified our mind so then they can gentrify our neighborhoods so they can gentrify everything else so we out here think we man i want my 40 acres in the mule i want my reparations i want my reparations when your grandmother and your mother, they got land in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. You don't want to hear about that. You don't want to think about that. Because you you so focused on reparations when you own the country already. <laughs> what? Ain't no reparation. Get just give me a return. Just give me a return. Just return return my I'm not even tripping. Just return my land. Return it. Okay. Got massive universities on indigenous land okay stolen land right so if you actually did your genealogy and that's another thing even if you want reparations for slavery you have to know if your ancestors were actually slaves so you got to do the work you got to do the work honey you got to do the work honey because you might do the research and realize you know what we don't need to be supporting reparations because my ancestors is actually slaves your ancestors might be slaves i mean slave owners right instead of slaves and these white people run out here thinking that you know i'm not giving you reparations i never was this uh, uh, i never was a slave owner but just my great 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 they might have they great great grand might have been a slave and they don't even know it y'all don't know y'all don't get me started so this is this is this is the reason why they had to my instagram because i was out here saying to I, I was too i was doing too much i was doing too much i was telling i I was, I, I, they don't want that. They want me out, out here begging for people to believe that black lives matter. <laughs> ha, they want me to be on my knees crying for for the world to believe that black lives matter. Look here, okay. God, every day I wake up, the Lord lets me know black lives matter. Every day. We've been mattering since, 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 <laughs> since the first sun came up the first time on earth and it's going to matter to the last time it ma- the sun lets me know the black lives matter the sun because i I- I- am elevated by the sun i'm not deteriorated by the sun that is life you know what i'm saying that lets me know my come on now stop 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 that stop that okay so yeah I, I'm just, it's just been a lot. I just learned so much. I mean, the biggest things that have blown my mind so far have been, because I've known I have indigenous, like, every black person knows that 
And that that's the part that is just so frustrating because we all know we're the only people in the world who are like, oh, I have Indian in, in me, in me, in my blood, in me. You never hear white people say, I have Italian in my blood. I got Italian in me. I got a little Italian in me. I got a little Irish in me. No, they're Irish. They're English. They're Italian. It's not in them. If their grandmother is from Italy, they're not going to say, I have an Italy in me. I have Italian in me. I got a little bit of Italian. My grandmother was Italian, so I got a little Italian in me. No. No, that makes no sense. They are Italian. Okay. It is white supremacy. Okay. White supremacy, which is what Pan-Africanism is, if you actually get it, right? Because it's the idea that black is like dark. It's really colorism. The idea that if you are a certain shade of color, that your motherland, your motherland, not the world's motherland, not everybody's motherland, which is what it is. Your motherland is a dark skinned person, darker skinned person is Africa. Okay, and you cannot originate from anywhere other than Africa, even if you literally, my birth certificate says Houston, Texas. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Right? But white supremacy will tell you, even if, even though there's white people in Africa right now, born in Africa, born in South Africa right now, okay, been there for hundreds of years, right? They come here, they're here for a little while, they have a child, their child is American. Their child is American. Me, my ancestors have been here Plymouth Rock. Do you hear me? Plymouth Rock. Okay. Marrying my melanated ancestors, which were the indigenous people, the copper colored people that were here when they came here. Okay. My great, 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 grands. We're in America. But y'all want me to call myself African American. Y'all want me to delete my nationality because African American is not a nationality because there is no nation called Africa. America. There's no nation called Africa America. There's no African American nation. There's no black nation. Black, the place called black does not exist. Okay. Cubans are Cuban. Haitians are Haitian. Americans are goddamn American. Okay. You're born in America? I'm American. What the hell? How the hell can you be so territorial of a block? Of a corner? Of a war? I'm from third world, I'm from eight world, I'm from night world. Uh, 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 uh. How can you be so territorial about a corner that you do not own, but you still call yourself African American? You still don't have a nationality. That doesn't make, how does that make sense? You will kill, like we have, <laughs> people will kill people for going on their side of the block, but you still consider yourself African American. You still don't realize that this country is yours. That's where... We need to, we, that's what we need to heal. That is the curse of white supremacy. Okay, that's the curse of white supremacy. So, with this, I really want, and also, I mean, it it affects everybody, right? Because, like, even Latinos, they're trying to make Latinos black. They're trying to make Latinos black, Okay, when I say they're trying to make Latinos black, they're trying to erase Latinos. And Latinos have largely already be, been erased. Okay. They've largely already been erased um, in America, but they're trying to force them. And they've been erased. Where are they at? Like their identity is scrambled, right? All of our identity really is scrambled all over the world. Unless you do the research, it's a lot. So. They're, when Latino, because they're in the middle, right? Those are dangerous. People in the middle are dangerous, okay? They're dangerous to white supremacy, okay? So they don't want melanated people to have nationalities. They only want light-skinned people to have nationalities. This is the thing with Afro-Latino, okay? And I pose this question. Um... I believe that Afro Latino, the Afro Cuban, Afro all that, is a form of white supremacy. Okay, it's colorism because it's basically like if you got an Afro, if you dark skin, 
you're Afro Cuban. We need you to be connecting yourself to Africa. Even if like like I talked to my friend about it and she made the point that like in Latin countries like Brazil, Brazil and different things like that, a lot of Africans went there, right? And they still practice a lot of the spirituality. And then I was like, well, in Africa, in a lot of places in Africa, like Cuba, I mean, Kenya and different places like that, if you do anything that looks anything other than Christian, they're going to hang you. They're going to try to kill you. It is illegal, okay? You're going to die, right? You're going to die in Africa, okay? So these people in Brazil... They have African. They actually have African ancestry. A lot of people in the United States don't actually have African ancestry because a lot of the Africans went to the Caribbeans and in this into South America. Do your research. Um, they actually have African ancestry, but how long do you have to be in a country to be to have that national to be Brazilian? Right. The lighter skinned people that are in brazil are or all latin america are largely lighter skinned because they come they they came from europe so are you going to call them euro brazilian are you going to call them euro cuban because largely the cubans who are lighter skinned they are lighter because they derive from spain some of them derive from spain and different places like that right it's a way to erase the dark, like take the nationality from the darker skinned people. And also some of those darker skinned people are indigenous to that land. They don't want indigenous people walking around knowing that they're indigenous. We can't have you speaking your language. We can't have you knowing that you have rights to the land that you own, that we owe you things. So I'm gonna need you to be Afro Cuban. I'm gonna need you to be Afro Brazilian. I'm gonna need you to be Afro American so we can gentrify your land. Okay, that's colonization, right? We think colonization is physically moving people, right? But it's in the brain, right? Largely. And people know that, but they, I feel like until you actually do your own genealogy, do your own research on history, because even like Black Panther and stuff like these are made by white people. Black Panther was about America. It's about Wakanda. It's literally America. Do it on the Google Map. Type it in your Google Maps. The only place that you're going to find any types of wakandas are in america and wakanda is literally a deity a god deity to the native americans in america wakanda is in america and i'm gonna go through that i've been saying i'm gonna go and talk in depth about that for a long time but it's just like time hasn't presented itself but (sighs) do your genealogy that is my my solution to everything if you're white, if you're Latino, do your genealogy. You're gonna find some black people in there. If you're white, if you're if you're if you're if you're Latino, you're gonna see some dark. You already probably know the dark ancestors you got, okay? And they may not be African. They may just be indigenous to that land. That's what it, that copper colored people largely populated all of the Americas, all of them, all of the Americans, the North Americans, the Central Americas, the South Americas, okay? All of it. If you go to Mexico, it don't matter how dark or light you are. You Mexican. You Mexican. You could be as dark as me or darker. You Mexican. Okay? So, that's not because you're mixed with some African. It's because you're Mexican. That's the mixture, the, the darkness. The indigenous people, that's how the indigenous people in that area was looking. And you won't know for sure until you do your genealogy. Some of y'all in in parts of West Africa, y'all, if y'all do y'all in, in ancestry, if y'all do y'all genealogy, okay, like in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, some of y'all are American. <laughs> That's crazy. Some of y'all ancestors was shipped to West Africa after, in the 1800s, in 1700s. Okay? 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 All right, I'm done. I think I got my point across, right? I see y'all. I will see y'all on the next episode of Red Pill Radio. And let me know what you think of this episode. I'll see you. I'm out.